it's good to know that Christmas is over. <laughs> there is one thing that happens in Christmas. We all eat too much. We all travel too much. We all drink too much. We all do talk too much. But there is one thing that is very important to me and that is the fact that Christmas or not, if you believe in Jesus or not, if you are an atheist, a Buddhist, or Mohammedist, or whatever it might be, when the day of Christmas comes and you take a holiday, you are proclaiming to the world, regardless of who you are and what you believe, that Jesus, the Son of God, came on earth. And then if you are eating a pudding or a cake, or if you are drinking a beer, or whatever glass of wine, or whatever it might be, no matter what you believe, because you are doing those things, you are proclaiming that Jesus, the Son of God, came on earth and he lived down here. You can say, well, I don't believe in him. Why do you eat for him? Why do you do all the festivity for him if you don't believe him? But then the heart of man is double-minded. We think one thing, we believe another, we feel another, and therefore we are a very complicated people. Christmas is over, but we have a new year coming. This is the first Sunday of the new year which is coming before us. There are two scriptures which I was thinking of. When is the beginning of the year? One is in Genesis 1, which he says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And today I still believe with all of my heart that God is creating day after day, hour after hour, for the building of his kingdom. And the second one is in John, John 1, 1, which is also saying that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, uh, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What a wonderful in, in, incorporation of unity that I have never experienced anywhere, anytime, but in this particular scripture. Jesus and the Word and the Spirit and the Father, they were one. And as one, they were able to create because they had one mind and one heart. That is a very hard thing sometimes to do because in us humans, we have our mind in one thing, we have our heart into another. Now you can see me as a young person with a lot of hair, good looking, very, uh, well anyway, whatever, I was looking about 50, 60 years ago, and or 70, oh, oh never mind, let us stop there, shall we? <laughs> but um, uh, going, into a, uh, going into a car place where they sell cars, and there they, I'm a Cadillac man, but of course, then there is other people, they like Lamborghinis and Maseratis and all of those kinds of things, beautiful cars over there, and my heart says, that Maserati red, that is for me, that's what I really want. Ah, uh, my heart goes for that car, I really want that car, uh, I want that car, and my mind said, shut up you don't have the money for it you can never afford to it so my heart wants it but my mind is telling me that i cannot sometimes we use the same methods for our spiritual thing in our spiritual world in our heart we want many things we want God to work. We want God to heal. We want God to move. We want God to bless us. We want God to do all kinds of things for each and every one of us. Our heart goes out for God and we want it. But our mind is telling us it is impossible. It can't be done. It was all done in the years of the past and today it cannot happen it again. And therefore, my heart and my mind are at war with himself and unless I can get them together, I will never experience the fullness of the blessing of God upon my heart and upon my life. My God help us in 19 and 2019. Wow, I'm really back out of century now. But in 2015, may God help 
moment that right here in this church the beginning of this unity in the heart and the mind and the unity between the man and the woman and the people in which you're sitting in the chair it will be as one in searching for God in wanting for God in desiring from God so that the mighty power of God might be manifested and if it has to start here let it start here and let it fall to the world wherever it might be until Jesus comes but I long it I want to see a manifestation of the glory of God Sometimes we think of the past. We look at the year which is gone. And I'm sure that many of us, we have some very hard times in which we have to go through. Things that we have to suffer, things that we have to uh, go over, things that we had to uh, adjust ourselves, things that were hard. Some because they have lost some loved ones. Some because they have seen of their uh, of their things in which uh, they, uh, they, they their experience was being made hard because the year was hard for them. I remember many times that we when, when we grew up in the church. When there were six of us. We were in the ministry, and uh, we were going out preaching and. Uh, taking care of churches in different parts of the country and then we always made a point once a year at least that the six of us we will be at in Rome in our home church and trying to be there at least to have fellowship with each other and many times we will come together and sit and we'll go for a cup of coffee or for a pizza or whatever and we sit there and we talk and we share the things that God had done through our life to the time that we were not together. And so somebody was saying one thing and somebody was sharing another thing. And it was very unusual for young people uh, in the early 20s to talk about the things of God. But that's all we knew. That's all we knew. And therefore, we were talking about the manifestation, what God was doing and in, in our area, in our place. And in the night, Oh, up to the early hour of the morning and we were still talking about the greatness of God and the goodness of God but the last time that I went to Rome I could enjoy that fellowship because many five of my friends they were not there anymore I felt alone I felt lonesome I felt to the point where that year was not a good year for me I couldn't share anything with anybody I couldn't tell my friend what did God do for you and in your area. I couldn't tell him, I couldn't tell him to try to share the excitement in which I had somewhere in a long walk with God, with anybody else. Because they were not they were not there any longer. And because they were not there, when I got up in the church is about two thousand people and I began to look around and I couldn't see my friends anymore. I could hardly speak. My mouth was dry. My tongue was just attached to my to my mouth that I was not being able to utter a word. I couldn't say a thing. Theory, I began to weep like a little boy. At 80, at 80, at the age of 80, it's not easy to do that. But I began to weep like a little boy. My friends were not there anymore. No one was there to be able to share with me. No one, no one was there to be able to uh, uh, to be able to uh, uh, to encourage me somehow or some way. They had all gone. I sit down. I couldn't speak. The people looked at me, and I became even more embarrassed because for the first time in my life, I was not able to speak, and that is very embarrassing for a preacher. And believe me, I couldn't take it anymore. So I just said, my brother sitting next to me, I put my hand upon his shoulder and I said, I can't stand any longer. I am going to sit down. So I sat down. 
People were expecting me to say something. People were expecting me to share something. But I couldn't because my friends were not there. I felt lonesome. I felt alone. And I couldn't share anything with anybody anymore. That was a hard year for me. That was a bad year for me. That was a year in which I want to forget. That is a year in which I do not want to be able to, uh, to be able to remember. And maybe there is somebody here today which the year that it just passed is not a good year. It's a year that you want to forget. It's a year that you don't want to be remembered in the days of your life. But let me tell you something. As I went home and I began to search for God, the Lord said to me, why are you so lonesome and so uh, depressed? He said, I have prepared a place in heaven which is called eternity. And in that place there is time at no end. You can meet your friends and you can talk and you can share and you will be able to be together forever and forever and forever and forever. And there is no end. From that time on, the presence of the Spirit of God came upon my heart and upon my life. I began to be encouraged in my soul and I say, oh yes, I am not living for today. I'm not living for 2014. I'm not living for 2015. I am living for tomorrow. And if this is the beginning of the year, I am living for today and for tomorrow and for February and September and March and then all the months that will come, I forgot. And all the months that will come after that. It doesn't make any difference. I am living for the future and no longer for the past. There is a year upon us. Today is the first Sunday. Whatever is going to happen this year, we don't know. What God is going to do and what is the plan of God for my life or your life through this year, I don't know. Whatever it can happen, I don't know. I only know one thing, that today I can commemorate the first second book of Corinthians chapter 5, which is said, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is what? He is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. 2015, I come to you today declaring the word of God all things are passed away and those who are born in Christ they are the, the, the old things are passed away and all things have become new. Year 2015, I am coming to you regardless of what 2014 was, regardless of 2013 was, 2015 is a new thing because it's a new year, it's a new challenge, it's a new time, it is a new place and it's a new preacher and because I've been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh glory, that's what you need, that's what we need. Here is there. There are things because we are new creatures, of course, in Christ Jesus. We believe that this year is going to be a good year because it's new. Something is going to happen. Point is, what do we want it to happen? What is our intention? There is a scripture that worries me sometimes, Matthew 6, 28. No man can serve two masters. Therefore, if the year is coming, we cannot serve two masters. No one can do that. We must have a unity in expectation for the thing that God can do for our heart, for our life, for our church, for our nation. If you're waiting for the politician to do it, they're not going to do it. If you're waiting for somebody else to give you a hand and they're going to do it, they're not going to do it. Because they don't know how to do it, they don't know what to do, 
they are in trouble themselves. The only way that we know is when we become of one mind and one accord. One mind and one accord. Now, you remember the disciples. I sometimes I thought, I wonder why it took them 10 days before the Holy Spirit came. And everybody said, oh, well, because the fullness of time had to come. But the fullness of time, it could have come even before, couldn't it? Because only the men that if the Holy Spirit, that if the Holy Spirit would have come upon them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and they were doing the real thing. But it took them 10 days. Two handful. One reason it is, I believe, it is because it was 120 of them and they had to come in one accord. And they were not in one accord. Everybody had his own idea. Everybody had his own way of thinking. Everybody had his way how the Lord was going to do this, was going to do that, and what kind of manifestation they were going to have. They had their point of view, and therefore, there were 120 point of view, and it takes a lot of work from the Holy Spirit to be able to change 120 point of view into one point of view. The next thing is that before they could change 120 point of view into one point of view, he had to change each and every one of us each and every one of them, the heart and the mind, and put them together so that they can be one and so they can be one with the next one, and then one with the next one, and my brother and my sister, once we are able to achieve that unity within the church, only then and then alone, we will be able to achieve the revival in which we are asking God to have. It is good to have one in the revival. It is good to wanting to be blessed from God. But my friend, revival will cost. And it will not cost money, but it costs sacrifice. Because we cannot have a revival unless first our mind and our heart are together. And then, as we are sitting in a chair, each and every one will be in one accord. I said many times, it seems to me that the Spirit of God, as it moves upon the church, there is a person sitting here and another sitting here and another sitting here. This one here, he said, God, I thank you because you are blessing me. This one here, he said, I left a roast in my oven and I hope that the preacher is not too long so I will not be able to get burned. The one over here, he said, I got a job and I hope I can make that job. And the other one over there, I left the dog somewhere and I hope that my neighbors are not going to complain. My brothers and my sister, we are here in the presence of God. Forget about the dog. Forget about the word. Forget about the rose. Forget about everything else. If we want the moving of God, we must forget all of those things. Become one. And then we see the righteousness. It can't be done any other way. Only then the spiritual power of God will flow as that will flow in our heart. It will overflow to our neighbor. It will flow to things who are around us. What do we want for the new year? Now I, I love the priest, but um, yeah, I, I like I like better the old fashioned people. I remember when I started to preach, if I had a, if I had notes like this, the preacher would come to me, take it away, and say, don't preach by the word, but preach by the Holy Spirit. And he'd take the notes away from me. So we had to learn to, the Bible were small in those days, because they had no problem with the eyes, so the Bible were very small, you know, and so, the, the, the notes had to be smaller than the Bible so that the preacher couldn't see them. And uh, you had to, you know, there's always a way out or something. And so you had those small little things and you put them in the Bible and the Bible closed the Bible in it. And, and so they would sit over there, they don't see the papers that you had notes and they couldn't say anything, but you were still having notes. 
But uh, if the wind would blow in the north, go somewhere, the pastor would say, this is the last time you're going to preach in my place. You're not going to preach by the word this. You're going to preach by whatever you have heard. But you're going to preach by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So you learn how to preach by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you wonder what's the real business, anyway. The year 2015 is here. Let us make something important to it. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I am reaching for those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God. Forget about the things of yesterday. Get in for the things of the future. And the things of the future are the things of God. The things of yesterday are the things that are gone. Therefore, we are going to make up our mind today, in this first Sunday of the year, we are going to make up our mind. We are going to make a definite definition, uh, a the definite decision. We are going to make a decision. You gotta start sometime. If you don't do it this morning, you have to do it tonight. If you don't do it tonight, you have to do it tomorrow. If you don't do it tomorrow, you have to do it the following day. Unless you do it, you're not gonna get anything. We are going to make a decision. Decision no number one. I make a decision that I am not going to tangle with the things of the world, but in everything that I do, I will decide for God and for God alone. You see, we cannot serve two masters. You serve one or you serve the other. And I'm not saying don't go to work anymore, but I'm saying let your heart be on the right spot for the right place. I am going to make a decision I am not going to entangle myself. I entangle myself with the things of the world. I am going to decide that everything I do, God must be first. Number two, I will follow Jesus in whatever he does. If it is in the water baptism, I will also follow. Very seldom you hear people talking about water baptism, but that is part of following Jesus. I will follow Jesus also in the water baptism. I will, I will, uh, I will tell to people of the, uh, by doing that, I will tell the power of darkness that I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am dead, signified going to the water because I am dead, signifying that I died with Christ and I'm resurrected with Christ again and therefore I can tell the power of the enemy and I can tell the power of darkness, lay off your hands upon me because I don't belong to you anymore. I belong to God and God alone and you have no right even touching me and believe me, they will not stop you because you are not in their territory. You believe sometimes we don't believe that that happened, but it does happen, it's happened to me. I was heading into a town and I was preaching the gospel and I had a group of people group of people, young people all around me and they were asking me questions about telling them the gospel. I think I told you this before. Then we heard a noise somewhere, somebody yelling, screaming, and, and a woman came up, was about this high, and she came up running to where we were, and as soon as she arrived over there, everybody left me, and I was left all by myself. I couldn't figure out why they all left, and I was there all by myself. But she came to me, she came yelling and screaming. She came up to me and she looked at me and then she couldn't scream anymore. She had no power of screaming anymore. Her mouth started closing down. She stopped walking. She didn't, couldn't do anything anymore. She became red in her face. She turned around and she ran away. She walked there, but she ran away. 
I think she ran away. All of the young people that were there listening to the word of God, they all came by. And they said, are you okay? Are you all right? I said, yes, I'm fine. He said, I want you to know that that woman is the witch of town. And many people have been having headaches and then having trouble. Whenever she appears, there are troubles and only by troubles. Don't you believe that? I said, of course I believe that. But I also believe that I don't belong to her. I don't belong to that world. Because I went to the world of baptism. I was dead in Christ and resurrected with Christ. Now I belong to a different world. She cannot enter into my world. And she cannot touch me because she has no power of touching me. Because she belongs somewhere else. Yes. You believe that? Yes, it's happened a few times. I can tell you a few times, a few, few of them, but anyway, this, this is the one that came to my mind. It means to the power of darkness, you have no power over me. This is the beginning of the year. I decide, number three, I will decide to attend church. If it's no rain or whatever, I have decided to attend church. Why? We are Christians. We're supposed to attend church. Yeah, we are Christians at home. But if the weather is contrary, we stay home. We don't go to church. And therefore, what we do, we must make a decision. I decide to attend church. Why do I go and attend church? I one time one man in the church in New York he said to me, he said, Pastor, he said, if I don't if you don't see me too often, he said the reason is that I can turn on the TV, I can listen to any preacher that I want, and believe me, some of you are better preachers than you are. And I said, I said, just stay home, I don't have to come to church. And I said, Good on you, stay home, don't come to church. But the next time you are in trouble, don't call me out. I'm hot, and if you feel lonesome, hug your TV and kiss your TV and tell them how beautiful it is and let them encourage you because I am not going to come. I'm going to church because I want to be encouraged by the word. I'm going to church because I want to encourage my brother because if he's going to sing over there and nobody's here, he's not going to be encouraged. I want to sit there because I'm sitting next to my sister so that whatever it is, we are praising God together. We are glorifying God together. But most of all, I am encouraging other people to come to church, to praise God. If I don't come, they don't come. You preaching to one teacher. I make a decision. I am going to church because I want to be a blessing. It's funny, we want to be a blessing in Africa. We want to be a blessing who knows where. But we don't want to be a blessing right next door where we are. Isn't that something funny sometimes? How it happened? That's the, the way it is. So, number four. Don't worry about it. I'm, I don't go wrong. You know that. <laughs> the Lord doesn't allow me because it makes me tired and I have to stop. <laughs> so I, number three, I will not make decision to attend church so I can be a blessing to my brothers and sisters. <laughs> number four, I am going to believe that what I am as a new preacher God has given me spiritual powers whereby I can live by and where I can use them by. I'm going to believe that this year I'm going to improve the anointing of the power of the Spirit of God into my life. And I'm going to use what God has given to me so that I can help other people for the glory of God. Everything that we do must be for the glory of God. Everything that we help it must be for the glory of God. Therefore, I am going to leave as a new creature and I am going to increase, and I'm going to ask God to increase the power that He has given me by the power of the Holy Spirit so that I can help people. I am going to believe foolishness is by me. 
but I'm going to believe for a fullness of the Holy Spirit in my life, for the fullness of the glory of God in my life. I want to be able to be like Peter, that when he walked down the street, he didn't have to say anything, but the very shadow of his life, if people were healed by the power of God, I'm going to believe, foolish it might be, that that power that was on Peter is still upon us, that that power that was on the disciples is still upon us, because it's still the power of the Holy Spirit which is in you and which it is in me, and we can do great things for the glory of God and for the power of God. Oh, hallelujah! I remember the story of an old preacher who once he said he was traveling in the 1800s, so it's a, it's a very old picture, and he was driving on a, uh, in a, on a train, and in those days the train had compartments, and he was sitting nearby the window, and as he was, the train was going to the night, he was thinking about the glory of God, he was thinking what God had done for him, he was thinking what God had done in the last meeting that he was in. The joy of the Lord came upon his heart. The compartment was filled with people. And his heart was so filled with the presence of God. He wasn't saying anything. But his face began to glow. And he glowed like the sun. My brothers and sisters, the Bible does tell us that if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will glow like the stars in the heavens. And the people that are nearby us, they will know and recognize that we are the children of God because of that glory that we have in our life and in our face and suddenly as he was thinking about God as he said money he said one man who was sitting across the street from him across the street from him he turned to him and he said sir what's the matter with you he said your face is glowing like the sun he said I see something in your face and as I'm looking at you I am I have a, I have a deep sorrow for my sins and I want to sit down I want to kneel down and ask God for the healing for the healing my sin and to forgive my sin sir help me you can help me and that day while the train was going a hundred miles an hour or wherever it might be the moon was shining outside and that there was darkness there in that compartment one man knelt down on the floor and the other man put his hands upon him they had a pray of the sinners the angels in heaven were rejoicing because one man was giving his heart to the Lord I believe I want to believe foolish maybe but I want to believe my friend this is a new year this is a new time and remember that that word in Matthew chapter 13 verse 10 uh, Mark verse the chapter 13 verse 10 and Matthew 24 14 which is saying that the gospel of the kingdom will be published or proclaimed throughout the world then Jesus will come let me ask you a question is the year 2015 the year in which the kingdom of God is going to be proclaimed throughout the world, then Jesus will come? Maybe. Who knows? It can be done. But we need a decision heart, a decision that we have to make for the kingdom of God and the glory of God. God bless you. I hope that whatever Neil is, is enjoying himself. We'll see him when he comes back. I am getting tired. <laughs>